Friends, welcome to one of the most stunning places on this planet, Piney Lake, Colorado, which is near Vail, Colorado. We are here for something that kind of matches that backdrop, the 2017 Volvo V90 Cross Country, the fourth generation. Uh, so why don't you and I do a world premiere discussion on this and a mini tech review, and let's start where we always start, the engine. So before we dive off into bullets and numbers of engines, an interesting little fun fact here, more a design detail for an OCD guy like me. Uh, so Volvos, they all have this band that goes across the front grille. Uh, it turns out all of them now have the hood release just at the top of the band. Very cool. Anyway, engines. Uh, this is not going to be a surprise to you because this maps to the other S and V90s and XC90s that we've driven. Uh, this basically is the next step in the all four cylinder strategy. So that means there is a T5 and there's a T6, but a hidden vice here, uh, not all versions are on offer in every market. Uh, so effectively it starts with a T5, which is a four cylinder uh, direct injected gasoline turbocharged engine, 240 horsepower, and 258 pound-feet of torque, which comes in at a very low 1600 RPM. Uh, then we put that one aside, same size engine, effectively the same engine, so a two-liter four-cylinder, uh, but then they slap on a supercharger, and that adds significant uh, horsepower. It goes up to 302 horsepower, but more importantly, 295 pound-feet of torque, which comes in at 2100 RPM. Now, here's the thing. There is a T8 model in the V90. There was no discussion of the, uh, basically the plug-in hybrid that is the T8 in this model. And that opens up another discussion of what markets get what car. So over in Europe, there will be a T5, there will be a T6, and there will be a diesel. Uh, in the US, the only one that the, uh, the gurus at Volvo, Lex, the CEO, uh, he, would, he would confirm would be the T6. They didn't say no on this one, but I didn't hear a confirmed yes. So this is one of these things, think of it like a bonus question. Would you want a T5 or a T8 of a cross country in the US? Uh, let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All in Word, Moto Man TV All in Word. Okay, now that we put that aside, eight speed automatic, which we've driven over in the V90 and the S90 and the XC90. So we've driven a lot of Volvos as of late, uh, but make sure you go back and check out those episodes because we've experienced all of this work on the, uh, the spa architecture now in three different vehicles. Now let's put that aside and let's get into what makes this a cross country. Right, so this is the point where I get to dive into my like inner designer geek and talk some changes on the outside, but there's also some mechanical changes. Let's start with those. Uh, now, the first thing you see when you look at this is an obvious ride height difference. Uh, this is 8.2 inches in ride height. That's about 2.3 inches higher than the V90. But then you're also looking at this and saying, well, there's something else different about it. I just can't quite put my finger on it. That would be the wheels and tires. So this is a specific design wheel for the cross country. Uh, they are an inch bigger in diameter, so 20 inches. But then notice the tire itself. Uh, that really is what changes the look of all of the bits underneath the car in that it has a more rounder sidewall, so the construction of the sidewall is different, but also uh, the compound, the makeup of the tire itself is different, and then of course the, the tread pattern is different because this has really a different application in some soft roading. Uh, then if you look at our V90 episode, we talked about the different uh, suspension systems that are on offer. So, and this really actually is in the XC92. Uh, there is a base system in the T5 that gives you a leaf spring in the back, uh, which is shared with a Corvette of all cars. Uh, and then in this one, the T6, there is an air ride in the rear of this one, double wishbones in the front of all of them. Now again, T6 mainly in the US, so most of them will have the air ride in the back. Now that's pretty much everything in terms of mechanicals outside of the car. Inside of the car, there is a difference in the all-wheel drive system. It's the same Haldex system, it's the uh, version 5, but what they've done is they've retuned it for more off-road application, basically to deal with more torque, being able to get more torque to the wheels than in the V90, which is mainly on-road. Okay, now that we've talked mechanical, 
now allow me to be a design geek. Obviously, this is what, the fourth generation of the Cross Country, so they put this cladding on the side here, but what's very different about the cladding, yes, this is plastic, but the color is not injected into the plastic. So this is the first application of one of these body claddings where this is painted like this. Now, in this case, this is a different color than this blue, very cool color, by the way. Um, but what they do is they offer this in a body color to match the overall car, which I think that's probably what I would prefer. Firm. But the real effect here is it doesn't look like cheap plastic. It actually looks like a satin finished paint job rather than some piece of plastic that's been put on the side of the car. Then there's another design touch here where they've changed all of the trim here into kind of like this satin finished black. And then up in the front, they've changed the grill. So the grill is different in that it's still a scalloped like in the V90 and the S90, but they have this little design touch of these bits here. I personally don't know why they're there, but I guess it's a little bit more rugged. And then, I don't want to say the piece de resistance, but they kind of clean it up or finish it up in the rear back here by telling the world that you have a cross country. Now, there's some other changes, but those are in the inside, so we need to unpack the domain of Tisha Johnson. Now, this really shouldn't be a surprise in here. This looks like Volvos that we have seen over the past year and a half from Volvo, which is to say, a surprisingly elegant place to be. Now, don't get me wrong. I've grown up on Volvos, and I still love me the interior of like an old 240. It's, it's beautiful in, a, in like a rugged, utilitarian kind of way. Um, and it's just stood the test of time. And I think the same thing will happen here. This is not just utility, this is more elegance. And there's a couple of things that Tisha and her team changed for the cross country, two specifically. So you see the wood that's here? Uh, this is a darker uh, walnut, what they've done here. Uh, and it's only on offer in the cross country. Now, Tisha, you know, we were geeking out about some design stuff, and she was specifically saying that this looks fantastic with a tan interior, like the one we saw on the S90 in Spain. Uh, but there is the option, if you're not a darker wood fan, there is the option to do the, uh, that lighter blonde wood we saw on that S90 in Spain in the cross country. There's another touch that they've changed as well, and that's the stitching on the seat. Now they call it a pearl stitch, and effectively what they've done is a, it's a double stitch inside of one seam. So they're kind of taking like an old Bentley type of idea of stitching where they do a double stitch, and really that's meant for two joining two pieces of leather. This is a trim piece that they use in the center of these two pieces. It's a neat little touch and stands out. My guess is it would stand out better on a lighter color interior. I would say, just looking at this one, this is my own personal opinion, love the blue on the X exterior, but this dark color interior, it's, it's, it, it, it just, it, you lose a lot of the contrast, especially when you have this, all this work that went into the detail of the interior, like, look at the speaker cones here, or of course, a, you know, the Swedish flag, I mean, come on now, that's just simple, but elegant. Okay, I think we've covered everything that's new for the cross country on the interior. Uh, oh, there is one thing I completely forgot. So there is uh, Apple CarPlay, which we played around with in Spain, but now they're doing Android Auto. And here's an interesting little fun fact. So uh, the XC90's been out two years. Uh, S90's are really starting to get out there. So any 2017 model year Volvo that has this system, which is to say all of them in the 90 series, uh, you can retrofit the system with CarPlay and Android Auto. From the factory, they will all have CarPlay and Android Auto going forward, but I think it's a neat touch. And really, I gotta credit to Hyundai because they're the first one that did the retrofitting of software in a car, which, you know what? I think more car companies should be doing that rather than having to buy a whole new system, really a whole new car, to update the, the, either the firmware or the software in your car. Um, I think that is about it for the interior. So let's talk outside over beautiful Piney Lake, Colorado. So in summary, what do we got? Uh, well, the last totally new model in what Volvo calls the 90 cluster of cars, uh, which means now that the engineers and designers at Volvo are probably spending more time focusing on the 60 cluster of cars. 
Uh, so that means we'll have to check back in like two years. But between then and now, you and I are gonna have to drive this. And hopefully we'll do it here in Colorado or maybe better yet, let's do it in the Alps. I've never driven off road in the Alps. Well, in an SUV, but not in something like this. Anyway, I digress. I wanna now turn this to you guys, and here's why. Uh, we have focused on some of the mechanical changes, we focused on some of the design changes, and we focused on the propulsion systems. But really, it's those propulsion systems that I wanna go back to. So we know that there's definitely gonna be a T6, and we know there's a T5 over in Europe, but really, if you were given the choice between a T5, T6, or T8, I wanna know what you would choose, but more importantly, what would you do with this vehicle? Like, what is your application of a cross country? Because if I'm honest, this vehicle here with this ground clearance will do basically anything that a current crossover would do, probably more. And then there is most like soft rotor SUVs. This again, will do pretty much everything that those will do. Uh, so the question is not just T5, T6, T8, it's why? and what you would do with it. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, make sure you download our fancy new mobile application, which you can download for free at Apple iTunes or Google Play. And don't forget, we are now live at five, count them, five international airlines, Emirates, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin America, Virgin Australia, and soon American Airlines. And number two, a fun fact, and this one, even I can't believe because I just found this out not but like an hour ago. So the chief engineer of the 90 cluster of cars, uh, Hicken, hopefully I'm not butchering his name too, uh, too badly, Hicken Iverson, he has been with Volvo for 35 years. Now that is not the special part. The special part is he started working at Volvo when he was in high school. So when you and I were chasing girls in high school in like old 240s, he was engineering the then new Volvo 760. Really. Until I see you next time, hopefully from a place this beautiful, bis später.